I came across this video the other day on MetaCafe, claiming proof evolution is a flawed theory. Well, as this has eluded the most intelligent people on the planet for the past 150 years, I thought this deserved a look. I mean, sure, they've forgotten that the Earth rotates and they have the Moon orbiting the Earth in the wrong direction, but I guess they simply wanted to conform to the standards set by their creationist peers. Whoa, pause. Fatal creationist mistake they have attempted to use numbers. Fact check. When man went to the moon, he didn't just play golf, but did some fascinating scientific work. They found that the moon was about the same age as the Earth, four and a half billion years old, and had a peculiarly small core suggesting that the moon was created by a large object colliding with the Earth some four and a half billion years back. This also explains why the moon is tidally locked with the Earth, that is, it rotates exactly once for each time that it orbits the Earth. They also left mirrors on the moon such that we could measure the distance to the moon with exceptional accuracy. This has allowed us to determine that the moon is receding from the Earth at the rate of about 3.8 centimetres per year. Well, let's keep it in inches for the moment. That's one and a half inches per year. That's half of what the creationist states. Now that's an interesting observation. Why is the moon receding? If the moon is moving into a higher orbit, then essentially it is falling upwards. Where is the energy required for it to do this coming from? Well, let's take a look at the Earth-Moon system. You are currently about four moon orbits out into space. That's about a million miles. It's about four times further into space than any human has ever been. It's a long way from home, but it's still only one fiftieth of the way to Mars at its closest. All the fascinating varieties of life we know live on the thinnest skin of that pale blue dot. Every human, every nation, every religion live on that spinning little dot. And from here, barely visible, can be seen the moon. Let's take a closer look at a more cartoony version. Let's bring the moon in such that we can see what's going on. Firstly, we notice that the days hammer by on this rather cloudless Earth as the moon slowly orbits. I mean, we all know that it takes about 28 days for the moon to orbit the Earth, but this is not a vantage point or a time scale we're used to looking at. Now, the Earth has water on its surface, and this deformable matter is distorted by the gravitational field of the moon to give two bulges. However, the Earth spins so quickly compared to the orbit of the moon that these bulges are distorted and pull the head by the rotation of the Earth. This is why the tides on Earth always lag the moon passing overhead by a couple of hours. However, this gives the Earth a peculiar shape, which is the effect of accelerating the Moon at the cost of slowing down the rotation of the Earth. The transfer of energy to the Moon moves it into a higher orbit. It gains potential energy, which perversely has the effect of making the Moon orbit more slowly. Oh yes, even simple orbital mechanics can be a mind-bender. It seems reasonable to suggest that the current state of the continents, forming essentially two land bars around the Earth, may be particularly apt for this transfer of energy from the Earth's spin to the Moon's orbit. However, this is not how the water on Earth and the continents have always been arranged. Measuring the current rate of lunar recession is comparatively easy to attempting to calculate what the rate of lunar recession was in prehistory although those who have attempted such calculations estimate that in Pangaea times the rate of lunar recession may only have been half of what it currently is. Okay, back to our creationist calculation. Okay, complicated calculation. Multiplying 4 billion by 3. The answer is 12 billion. I don't even need a calculator for that. And what does the creationist get? 1,230 billion. Yep, they multiply 4 by 3 and get 1,200. So, there are a factor of 100 out here and a factor of 2 out on the rate that the moon is receding. So far, the creationists have multiplied two numbers together and they are a factor of 200 out. So according to the creationist video, if you now ignore the factor of 200 error in their calculation, the moon would have receded 19 million miles by now, whereas the moon is only a quarter of a million miles away and then they claim that their inability to do maths proves evolution is wrong. Hmm. Meanwhile, if you scrub the creationist error of a factor of 200 and apply the same creationist calculation, you get that the moon was only about 130,000 miles away versus its current distance of 250,000 miles. In other words, the moon was about half the distance away that it currently is. 
These numbers are in the same ballpark as the massive impact theory, where the moon coalesced out of the debris as a tidally locked, elongated shape. But let's have a little fun with this creationist maths. A fast walker can typically move about 3 miles per hour. A typical walker moves about 600 miles per hour. At about the same speed as a jet airplane, proving, proving, using creationist maths, that cars can't have been invented and used by humans for transport, as your average human walking speed is about 10 times faster than an average car on the interstate. Further, your average bullet only travels a couple of times the speed of sound, as this is only about three times the walking speed of an average human, that's calculated by creationist maths, of course. And this proves that guns are an ineffective way of killing people, as your average human could easily dodge the bullets. Your average human can jump a couple of meters or yards. Your average human can jump about half a kilometer or a quarter of a mile, proving, proving using creationist maths that the bridges over the large rivers could not have been built by humans, as your average human could jump them with ease. Regrettably, creationists haven't figured out that ignorance is not a form of proof. Stupidity is not a way of knowing things. The amazing ability of creationists to multiply 3 by 4 and get 1,200 does not constitute a compelling proof why evolution is flawed.